Okay, greetings everyone. This is uh, my third entry here. Um, just kind of giving you guys a recap of where I'm at this week. Um, it's been a pretty eventful week. Hopefully this won't be a really long uh, vlog though. But definitely want to fill you guys in. This has been a very, very eventful week. Started out the week on Monday, like most people do. And um, continued to send out messages to as many connections as I could find with Ernie. Um, one of whom is a, a fella who's a drummer who used to uh, play with uh, Ernie. He actually responded back to me and he gave me, uh, he, he said he had forwarded my message to a phone number that he thought that Ernie had at one point and sent a screenshot of the stuff that I had sent just to, to verify that I was an actual person. <laughs> and so he went ahead and did that for me. I sent some more, um, I sent both of the uh, previous vlog entries to uh, Ernie's Facebook account. Again, didn't know if he actually uses that. Um, and I also sent one uh, to uh, Vince, Ernie's brother. And so I hadn't heard anything back from either of them. I think that's kind of where I left everything last time. But anyway, so that continued on. Um, I went and met with David Kate. Now, David Kate used to play um, with The Watch, which was one of um, Eric's uh, earlier bands. That's where he and Bo met. And so I talked to David Kate. And uh, David, he's actually a, a friend of mine. Um, I'm doing some business with him advertising-wise. But he was showing me his new um, location where he's putting in his own practice room, his own uh, little recording studio, um, and uh, his own um, you know, place of business. It's a pretty nice little setup that he's got that he's working on full digital and so forth. So I got to talking with him. We went out for lunch and uh, I told him about what we're doing here, about the um, reels and the history of Vibraflux. Uh, we talked about Bo and Mino and Eric and all this other stuff. Just kind of got him caught up to speed. He got me caught up to speed with the stuff that he's doing. We had a fantastic, fantastic conversation. And, um, He's interested in documenting this. He kind of said, well, you know, what's the angle? What 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 do you want documented? Um, which at this point, I mean, there's so many different stories and so forth. I think probably the best thing to do would just be for all of us to just get as much video um, as we can. You know, like I said, I'm doing these because uh, some of this might be able to be used at some point. Um, this also kind of keeps things straight in my mind as far as a chronology. Um, but... Uh, you know, if you guys can, if you guys want to do uh, some of these, just kind of sharing your insights about um, Vibraflux, about the recording process, about what you guys have up to, what you're doing, that sort of thing, go ahead. Um, if you want to type something out, that's cool too, um, or whatever. Uh, at this point, um, just shoot some video. We may use it. We may not use it. We may not make a documentary. We may have nothing on those tapes. We don't know. Um, but, you know, it can't hurt. Uh, in any case, he's very interested and uh, and he's willing to help as far as the documentary goes, which is great because, again, my only concern is just getting this record done. And after that, you know, whatever happens after that happens after that. So that was David Cade. I met him on Tuesday. That would be December 13th. Um, just as, <laughs> and as fate would have it, just as I got in the car and was uh, leaving my lunch appointment with David, I got an email from Father Joseph, and he sent a 15-page uh, history of Vibraflux um, from the beginning of how he got involved uh, in the Johnson City music scene and some of the bands that we were in previously. He talked about the watch. He talked about Calico 9. Uh, he talked about what happened after Vibraflux, where... Um, he and the Alexis Wax went out to Murfreesboro, etc. 
So that was really interesting all the way up through um, his conversion and, uh, and going to the monastery and so forth. So that was really good. I liked, I enjoyed that because it kind of gave me some insight into how he was thinking about the time and uh, his chronology. So, yeah, so if you guys have a few minutes or something, I mean, go ahead, put something together. Um, all of this stuff is really interesting, uh, at least, you know, at least to me and to some other close friends. So anyway, so that was that. Um, and, uh, oh, also, on that line, I know Mino has been posting a lot of audio, some very cool audio from, like, the Casbah from demo tapes and I think there were three cuts on there that are actually from this recording project that we're talking about um, some uh, some mix downs that Richard did um, I guess that was for um, for Mino's uh, resume or something I don't know sounded good um, but yeah if you guys have any old recordings like that you know um, go ahead and post them I think Mino has been putting them on Google Drive that works perfectly fine. Um, I was able to, to watch what he and listen to what he had posted. So, um, so yeah, continue to do that, uh, for sure. Um, so that's, uh, that's what happened on, on Tuesday. Uh, by Wednesday, I went ahead and, uh, sent the tapes finally down to Nashville. Uh, went down to the UPS store, gathered all that stuff up, and sent it on down to Welcome to 1979. And uh, that felt really good. At that point, um, I felt like, okay, you know, here we go. The, the, uh, the train has finally left the station, so to speak. So, uh, so sent that down there, and I, I emailed uh, Chris Mara at the, um, at the studio, and... Uh, sent as much information as I had on this project uh, about what he was going to find on there as far as, a, you know, 16-track uh, audio, uh, one inch, um, mentioned that this has been sitting in a house for 20 years and has some uh, potential water damage and so forth, and just kind of filled him in on everything. The one thing I didn't have was any kind of a track listing um, I don't know how many songs are on there. I don't know which songs are on there. I don't know the names of all of those. Um, so if you guys can provide uh, any of that information, that would be great. What Chris said they're going to do is when they digitize all of these tracks, he's going to put each song and their tracks into um, a folder. There's going to be a folder for each song. And along with that, there's going to be a rough mix in each folder. So um, as we listen to each rough mix uh, and identify the song, we can name the folder by that song. So we'll be able to keep track of, you know, which folder has which song and that kind of thing. Uh, and then what he's going to do after he digitizes that is he's going to send us a thumb drive that's got all the raw tracks and uh, the rough mixes. And he's going to also send those physical uh, analog tapes back as well with new um, labels on it so we can label that they'll catalog it down there as well in their files so they'll know um, you know what they did what date and all that sort of thing they'll have catalog of that at the studio as well um, at that point then I guess you know one of the things that my brother mentioned was getting some reaction shots I think that Jimmy and I are planning to get together and uh, and play these things um, and just listen to them, kind of kick back, and it'll be the first time, really, that uh, either of us have heard these tracks, to my knowledge. I don't know. Jimmy may have heard some, uh, but it'll be the first time that I've heard these, you know, other than the, the two or three um, mixes that, that Mino had posted. Uh, so that should be interesting, and uh, I think he wants to have a video of our reaction. So once we get that, um, and then we get that to you guys... Go ahead and and video your reactions too. Um, I think that that would be great uh, because again, that's there doesn't have to be anything um, other than just leave the camera rolling. <laughs> he can't get from the monastery to visit all of us. I think so. He really, 
uh, wants to, to be part of this. And this is really the only way he knows to be part of this um, is for us to provide actual audio and video that he can see and, and hear um, to be part of this. I know he's kind of a silent player in all of this, um, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, so that's, uh, so that was that. That was Wednesday. Um, by Friday, I, um, got a response from the folks down at, uh, Welcome to 1979, and they have the tapes. They received them, and they've gone ahead and put us in the queue. So we are in line. Uh, when those will be, uh, worked on and what the ETA is, I really don't know. Um, I don't know exactly how problematic the tape is going to be for them to work with. So I'm just going to let them, you know, take as much time as they need to. I mean, it's not like this thing needs to be in a rush stage at this point after all these years. I mean, it's waited this long, right? So when it's done, he'll let me know. And, uh, and then I'll kind of pass that along. And then the biggest news came on at on Friday night. Friday evening, I get a phone call, and it is Ernie. We do have contact with Ernie, and uh, we had a really really good conversation. Um, you know, we caught up as much as we could on a brief phone call, um, but yeah, this kind of caught him off guard uh, as well to hear that these tapes still existed. And that we were actually going to try to do something with it. And better yet, that uh, I wanted him to go ahead and be the one to do the mix down. Uh, I think that that was probably the most exciting part to him. Uh, because to my knowledge, um, you know, the earlier mixes that Richard did, you know, they were, they were good and they served their purpose. But um, I don't think, I mean, really universally, I don't think that it was... Um, the sound that you guys were hoping for. Uh, so that's what's going to happen now. So this will be in uh, Ernie's hands and he'll be able to mix these down, add whatever vocals he needs to add to that, you know, just kind of work his, his magic in that regard. So I'm really excited about that. We had some good conversations. He sent me some emails, sent me some copies of um, some projects he's been working on. Um, it just really solidified in my mind that he's the right guy to, to do this. I mean, you know, he's one of you guys. He's one of the fiber flux. I mean, he's, he was the front man and, um, and he knows, he knows exactly. He was in the room from, you know, all those years ago. Uh, so he knows what's, what's going on. Uh, but anyway, so that's what happened this week. That's the exciting news. So the two major goals that I had set to, um, to get the tapes sent to Nashville and to locate Ernie. Mission accomplished on that. So we'll see where this goes from here. Um, again, whatever you guys can provide. I've been enjoying listening to all of the, um, the music uh, that you guys have posted. And um, the only thing I can say is if you have any kind of, I don't know, there's probably no video of any of this stuff. Um, but there are photos out there. So if you have any photos, go ahead and, and, and pull those up. I'll pull up some more photos. I know we showed some photos last time. Um, this, these are, I, I'm pretty doggone sure that this is the Casbah. It looks like the Casbah to me. Um, it's, it's probably, I don't know if this is the actual Casbah. Uh, the photos were taken at that gig that Mino recorded. But nonetheless, uh, here's some photos. Pretty sweet. And that looks like, oh, that doesn't even look like my brother's kit. So I don't know. Maybe you guys were opening for somebody and using their kit. I don't know. Um, I love that Bo is wearing a uh, Miami Dolphins shirt. Keeping it real. Keeping it true. And there's the guys all together. Um, pretty sweet. These, I don't know what these are. These, part of me says that this is, well, I don't know if this, this, there are parts of this that look like whittles, but parts that don't. In any case, though, um, there they are, backed up against the front door. 
I know in Whittles, you had your back to the front door whenever you played. But I want to say that there was like a little side stage um, so at least people could get in. You guys may have some better photos than these. These are just the ones that were in the um, uh, photo album that we found. You now you can see all this streaking and stuff. That's all water damage from this photo album that was up in the uh, in the, the, the house out there in the woods. That's a good shot. Um, let's see here. This one is probably my favorite shot of those particular gigs. You got Ernie, he's sitting here chatting uh, with this gentleman here. But what's this going on here in the back? Um, I see a dude here who has a, uh, a bottle, a beverage in front of him, but seems to be cleaning out a, a pitcher. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody has an idea of what all is happening there. I don't know. Uh, what else? Oh, okay. So these photos i think that these if i'm not mistaken this is the stuff that was um when we were trying to lay down tracks at planet x maybe i don't know um when i was looking at this at first i was thinking you know i wasn't involved in any of this so i have no idea you know what was happening here or who was involved in any of this um until i saw this photo and that's obviously the back of my head so, yeah, I had something to do with this. So, obviously, this was us doing some demo tapes. Um, I see that there's a Milligan College uh, music stand there. So, I didn't know if maybe this was the practice house over at Milligan. I, I have no idea. Um, I don't know. Um, I do know that if you play and record too long, this is something that can happen. You can lose your hearing, but apparently you can also lose your eyesight. Um, this actually is a pretty accurate picture. That's kind of really what Father Joseph looks like now, um, quite frankly. Uh, of course, we all do, but what can I say? Um, and what else? Oh, and then there's pictures here. I may have sh showed these before. This is from the actual mix down um, over at, I guess this is at y'all's house over at Watauga. Um, this is uh, Bo. Of course, you know, he has to uh, sing for his supper. And there he is. Um, before we had any, um, before we had any of our brew pubs over here in Johnson City, which there is one on literally on every corner, um, you just had to make do. You had to do your own beer flight. Um, and I think that's what's happening here. Um, you just have uh, a couple of gentlemen um, experience some, some good, uh, solid artisanal, what do you whatever they call you know fancy beers so not quite as exciting as some of the other photos that we had from last week but you know again these are things uh that they bring back memories they bring back memories so anyway that's all i've got to report for today and um we'll see what happens now really at this point um it's managing expectations we just have to Keep our fingers fingers crossed that the tapes that come back, that the the um, tracks, the digitized tracks are usable. Um, we have no way of knowing until those come back. And if there's any way whatsoever to rejuvenate those tracks and make them usable, I am very confident that the guys down there, that Chris and the gang, are the guys to do it. So um, I'm really excited about that. Uh, and we'll see where it goes from there. I'll be in touch with you guys, and y'all have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye.